Hi, in this video I'm gonna address XML namespaces when we are using uh, XML E3 element 3 uh, library uh, in Python. And uh, the reason why is uh, I've received this comment from Jacob and he says, uh, I Francesco, I have this XML file and according to your video, uh, this, which is referring to the code, you find all times. So uh, is referring to these values over here in the XML, but it does not give anything back. Could you please help me? So let's have a look. Is uh, is correctly importing the element tree? Is parsing is XML? Is getting the roots? But when it gets to this for loop, uh, unfortunately nothing nothing uh, nothing is extracted. And uh, the reason for this is because is XML as namespace is defined, and uh, this is a this is a sort of format notation that you find uh, in some XML files, uh, more often than not. And uh, if we go to to this website uh, called uh, the w3schools.com under XML namespaces, uh, we find uh, the definition for it, uh, which is uh, a method to avoid element name conflicts. So how does it manifest, and uh, how do we how do we operate it? So uh, let's imagine we have two databases that both contain items which may have uh, uh, attributes or element tags which are similar, but we want to want to combine them but not confuse the two. One database may have a, a certain schema and another one may have a different one. So using um, using namespaces, we can combine them but avoid uh, or solve uh, these conflicts. The way they are defined is by this attribute called uh, XMLNS, which has a prefix and a URI. And we can see it in this example uh, over here, where our attribute uh, with the URI uh, in the form of this website and the prefix H uh, has been used throughout, throughout, the, uh, the document, throughout the XML file. First glance, uh, it doesn't look like um, the XML that Jacob provide has uh, these uh, prefixes inside. Uh, because the uh, namespace has been defined uh, at the top of the XML, the library uh, element tree uh, will assume that every single item is inside uh, this namespace. So when we try to extract the time, root find all won't find anything. Uh, however, we can solve this. So what I've prepared uh, for, for this video is uh, two, uh, sorry, three XML files. Uh, one, which is a simple XML file with no namespaces, so we can, uh, we can uh, review uh, some of the code and some of the methods we use to extract uh, data from it. And uh, a secondary XML file, which does have uh, namespaces. And uh, finally, we have uh, Jacob's uh, XML file, and we can try to extract the time. So first thing first, I'm going to extract uh, my, uh, sorry, I'm going to import my item.xml file, which, is co which contains the simple XML file. I'm going to parse it, get the root, and dump it so we can see it in the console. So I'm going to import the library and run this uh, block of code. And we can see our XML with no namespaces. Uh, in the in the console to the side, and um, we can see that our data has uh, five items, uh, and uh, under each item we have a name, uh, and, uh, and and uh, in this case apples, pear, oranges, iPhone, and iPads, and then price um, for every single item. So this could be an example of uh, a retail uh, website that is storing. Uh, information for the prices of their items. When I try to run um, this code, which is uh, which is finding all of the uh, element tags and tags under items, we have this list printed out in our console, and we can see uh, the item's name and uh, the actual uh, value store. So that's our tag. That's the text that we can see here in our print statement. This might not be the most uh, useful uh, thing to see. Because uh, let's say I want to view uh, the, the the name and the price on one line, uh, I can use generators and using either find or either find, I can uh, I can uh, I can use this generator to find the name and the price, and then using the uh, the zip function inside the for loop, I can combine them 
and uh, and get the price uh, for every every single value. The the next um, XML I want to look at is the one uh, where we finally look at um, namespaces. And uh, if I dump the tree, I, uh, I can start to see what uh, the library element tree is doing uh, with my data. So it has found um, my attribute. While the URI is correct, um, we can refer to the, to the actual file. You can see the uh, URI is correct for both the fruit and the electronics, but my prefix, uh, which I, I defined as F and EL, has not been imported. This is not uh, an issue per se. For, for the most part, uh, what we'll be working with is the actual URI. If, um, if I do a root find all and print the tags and text of every, everything inside the, this XML, what I can see is that my items does not have any namespace associated with it. And that is correct. There's no a namespace in front of it uh, uh, that we can see when we dump it. However, my uh, names for, for my fruit and uh, electronics do have a namespace associated with it. And the price also has a namespace associated with it. If, if we go back to the XML, we can see that uh, I had defined uh, using the prefix this um, namespace uh, under every single uh, entry under items. This is correctly reflected in my console. And uh, we can also have a look at the fact that um, when I use row find all and print uh, the tag, uh, it's, also, it's also including uh, the, the prefix in front of it. This is, this is kind of important and we'll see why in a second. If I, if I try to run the code that, that Jacob tried to run in his uh, in his XML with namespaces, I also do not uh, get any any output. And the reason is this namespace. When I'm searching for name, is actually uh, actually wants to know what the what the namespace is for uh, for the thing that I'm, I'm looking for. Before we start extracting these things, we can do a few things to to tidy this up. Let's dump the element three again. As I said before, the prefix is kind of ignored by, uh, by the library and has been replaced by this NS0 and NS1. We can correct it and put it back the way it was in our XML file by using register namespace. And this would be important uh, uh, later on, but it's, this is a good time to introduce it. If I use this function, I can define my prefix and uh, the URI to register the, the prefix. So I can do that for electronics and fruit. And if I run this and dump the tree again, now I get exactly the same format I had in my file with the correct uh, prefix in front of the value. Now, let's do uh, root find all again on everything. And uh, even though we fix the namespaces, uh, the URI is still the, the thing that has been displayed. So how do we get uh, apple and pear and orange? Uh, well, I want to do a root find all command uh, for name. However, I have to, I have to use the, the namespace in front of it to extract it. So if I do run this code now, I, I just get my, my list of, um, of, um, of text that was contained within my within my element. I can use a generator using the same notation for the price and the name and uh, run the similar code I used before and now I get uh, the price as well. Um, however, you probably have noticed that I've only extracted the value for, uh, for fruit, not elec electronics. I can replace uh, uh, fruit for electronics, but uh, let's um, Let's find another way of, uh, of doing the same thing. Another way to do this is to define a dictionary with my namespaces and uh, passing that to root, uh, root findall. So what I've done here is I've created this uh, dictionary where my uh, key is my prefix that I want to use and uh, the uh, URI is the uh, value of uh, the dictionary. 
and um, I do this for for both and if I run it and then I look at the documentation for root find all which we can easily do in spider we can we can see that uh, we can pass the path and uh, namespaces as an optional dictionary so this is why this uh, this had to be defined in as a dictionary and I can pass it over here in root find all this is not something we've done before uh, however, I still need to use my the prefix, but because I've defined uh, my my prefixes in, in the dictionary, I can then use this notation um, el uh, double dot and name to extract the name of my electronics uh, elements inside my XML. So if I run this, I uh, correctly get iPhone and iPad. What if um, I wanted to find uh, all the names and all the prices across every single uh, namespace uh, by using uh, the the wildcard uh, which is uh, this value over here instead of uh, the name of the namespace I can basically tell uh, either find or root find all to basically use any value uh, uh, in here uh, and extract my name and price so when I run when I run the, the same script I've run before uh, slightly differently now I get uh, the name uh, of uh, every single item and the price for both namespaces now let's uh, let's look at the, the last case which is the the file uh, that uh, Jacob uh, uh, produced uh, in his uh, in his comment I am in trouble with I've reformatted this slightly um, because it wasn't complete so I, I looked at the documentation uh, under uh, this website uh, to find uh, uh, how the schema was defined and I've been able to close it and I saved it as gopro.xml I don't know if this is uh, from a gopro um, but uh, one thing that is worth uh, noting is that while the namespace has been defined up here no prefix has been produced and uh, there's no prefix in front of any value on the xml so what's going on to see what's going on we need to see how uh, the element tree library interprets this particular XML file. So if I go back to, uh, to the code, I'm going to import uh, this XML file. Here, here is the problem. When I import it, the element tree library is finding the namespace. Uh, however, it's um, it's given it's given it this uh, sort of default uh, ns0 uh, prefix, and it's also applying it to every single value. Now, if I try to run the code uh, that uh, Jacob was trying to run to extract the time, uh, so that would be uh, th this value here and this value here, I get nothing as an output. Let's extract every single tag and text uh, that we find inside this XML file. As we did previously with the fruit and electronics, we see the URI namespace is being, uh, is being used across every single entry in this XML. So as you've guessed it, uh, when, uh, when we want to extract the time inside this um, uh, element tree, we have to provide uh, the, the URI to, to, be, to be able to extract it. Even though in the XML file itself, it did not uh, show any prefixes, our uh, element tree library has assumed that that, would, that that was the case. So we have to comply uh, with the way the library works. So if I run this code, which provides uh, the URI and then the, the thing that I want to search for or find, I get, uh, I get this output, which is uh, the correct time for both uh, entry inside the element tree. So is there another way we, we can extract this information? And the answer is uh, yes. <laughs> And one thing we can do, for example, is uh, register the namespace. If I register the namespace as basically nothing, just an empty prefix, and provide the URI, and uh, I dump the element tree again, I can see that now my XML file looks uh, exactly like it did in the, uh, in the actual file itself. However, the prefix are still in there, only we have uh, replaced it with uh, nothing. Um, so to extract the time, we, uh, we have to use uh, uh, the uh, root find all and pass the namespaces dictionary, which in this case uh, has an empty uh, key value. 
and uh, the URI and uh, if I run this I again get the time uh, out of uh, the XML uh, one thing of note is that uh, I don't have to provide in this case uh, a uh, any notation to define the time I don't have to provide uh, the um, URI anymore uh, in uh, curly brackets I also don't have to provide the prefix there's no there's no such uh, notation as as this uh, basically the this this would this would not run uh, the, the root fund assumes that uh, we're looking into this uh, namespace and so it extracts the value another way of doing this is to define the or register the namespace as something new that uh, we haven't used before in this case I picked topo uh, for topographics so if I run this and actually dump the element tree uh, as well what I can see is that now my uh, namespace URI as a prefix of topo and the uh, element tree library has applied the, the topo prefix to every single thing however now if I want to use uh, root find all I need to pass the namespace dictionary which has to be updated with my new key value of topo for this particular URI and uh, I also have to define, as, be, as we did before, the prefix of the namespace. So if I, if I run this now, I can see that uh, I again extract the time. The wildcard works again, but if I run it, I get the results again. So if you have any other questions regarding uh, the element tree library, uh, please leave them in the comments as well. Thank you. Thank you for watching and uh, uh, happy holidays.